Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of our weekly MMA uh, talk show called Chokes and Eye Pokes. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. Um, thank you for leaving a comment, um, letting us know what you think. As always, please like um, the video, please subscribe and uh, please check out our socials, including uh, we finally got Spotify um, for the podcast and for the talk show. Um, and all of that is in the description. So please check it out. Um, without further ado, um, we're back for another another episode. Um, myself and my co-host, Jack. How's it going, Jack? Oh, it's going good. Going good in you? Yeah, very, very good. Thanks. It's been a bit of a crazy, uh, crazy week for MMA. Um, the first and combat sports in general. Um, we saw Dana White offering Tyson Fury a fight with John Jones. I don't know if you saw that. I did. Uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like he's really responded too well uh, in terms of like what what if we can actually see that fight. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know if it was uh, Alex Pereira or if uh, it was Israel Adesanya that asked Tyson Fury about getting into the octagon and he's like i'm a yeah. boxer i never said i'm gonna fight i'm a boxer <laughs> yeah. so i think we got quite a bit of a you know a definitive yeah. answer there on yeah. on what's gonna happen it seems a little bit like a cop out like um, mm. yeah that that's not what we heard like a week ago <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. it's funny how fast like we said last week you know how fast uh, he backtracked as soon as the yeah. offer of fighting in in mma came about um yeah so that's yeah that was that was a little bit of an interesting one um to sort of start the week then I don't know if you saw um, Henry Cejudo saying he'll stand in as well. For, he he kind of said he wants to fight O'Malley, but then yeah. he said he'll stand in as an alternate for the um, O'Malley and Aljamain Sterling fight. Did you see yeah, that? I did. I did. I, well, I at first I, I I saw that news like I think it was yesterday, and I didn't know that there was jeopardy of Aljamain Sterling fighting. Mm. That I'm. Are, are you not a bit worried that the Aljamain story is going to be a little bit similar to? Francis and Ghanu. I don't know, dude. Um, I mean, I, I didn't really see what Aljamain was saying. Why that's in jeopardy? Is that because of injury, or is that because it's too soon to fight? Or I think fighter pay. Oh, uh, fighter pay, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I yeah. think that that's. But it's all speculative. I uh, yeah, I think it's quite speculative at this point. Oh, I don't know if he's in a position to to. <laughs> Francis and Ghanu was the heavyweight champion. Um, yeah. You know, if you're the champion at 135, I don't think you've got the same bargaining power as heavyweight. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, the lighter weight classes were kind of in jeopardy uh, when Henry Cejudo, just before he retired. I think, if I stand corrected, but they wanted to do away with the 125 class. Yeah. Uh, when that. he was still fighting. So I don't know if Aljamain Sterling has that, that bargaining power. Um, you know, maybe if he goes up to 145, fights Volkanovski and yeah. beats him, then... Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's interesting with alternates, you know. Um, Henry Cejudo says he wants his title back. And I can understand that that's probably... Look, you've got to respect somebody that's willing to go and wait, uh, cut weight and and basically stand in to fight for somebody uh, if there's an injury. Absolutely. But I think it's, again, you know, it's the same situation we met, we saw with Colby Covington at 170, standing in in the Leon edwards Kamara Usman fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People were giving him a lot of shit because they said, how can you say you're the best fighter, but you're standing in as an alternate, as like a backup? Yeah. So it's interesting. And it's, it feels like a little bit campaigny. I mean, at the same time, like Henry in general, it's great to have him back. Mm -hmm. I think that he's like one of the all-time greats and mm -hmm. it's like such a pleasure to see him fight again. we get the opportunity. But I would much prefer if he was looking at a fight with Marab. I mm -hmm. think that that would be more exciting um, as opposed to campaigning for a title shot. I mean, it, but it is smart because if Aljamain isn't going to fight, then I do think Henry versus um, Sean is much easier than Henry versus Marab. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, look, he's got to. He's he's also probably in that stage where he just wants to fight for titles. Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe look against the Mali. I think he gets it done. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I I think he. Especially now with the, in retrospect, you know, when he he lost to um, Sterling and we've seen him lose before to Mighty Mouse and come back and win yeah. um, and be extra motivated uh, with a little less ring rust. So, yeah, smart, I think. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. I, yeah, I don't think so either. I mm. do think Old Jermaine and, and Sean is going to come. Mm. We'll go through. Yeah, I think so. I think they'll work it out. Because um, I think it, the, the way that... that they know what operates. Um, this won't be an interim interim title fight if uh, Aljamain doesn't want to fight. Yeah. He always says, you know, if you don't want to fight, you don't have to fight. No one's going to force you. Yeah. 
So that'll be quite interesting to see what what happens there. Yeah, that I mean, but I think to me the bantamweight division shouldn't forget about Sandman in the background as well, because mm. like if I, I mentioned Mirab and Henry, because I'm so excited to see that fight, um, and I hope it does happen. But um, yeah, I don't know where Corey would would come in. Um, mm. and if not, why not he be? Why can't he be an alternate? Mm. True. Look, it's not confirmed that 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 Henry Cejudo is going to be an alternate. Um, so who knows, man? It's um, it's just interesting to see, uh, you know, guys not get desperate, but you know, like if it, you know, that's that's kind of the last sort of last resort for him. Um, Colby Covington did it. It wasn't really a last resort for him, but maybe they're trying to prove something and say, you know, look, they'll just make weight. Yeah. Um, even if they don't have a fight kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe in a weird way, they're trying to prove something. Yeah. No. So yeah, there's definitely an element of that. Mm, that would be. be interesting to see. Yeah. Then uh, some interesting news um, was apparently there's uh, Hamza Chimaev and Kamara Usman in the works for Abu Dhabi. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's going to be a cool fight. Yeah. Who, who do you have for winning? <sighs> Well, how do you think it's going to be? Dude, okay, so so if you'd asked me about Usman before the Leon Edwards losses, and it's not because he now has two losses, but it's just because two losses back-to-back -back just does something to you. I don't know. And I mean, his knee issues as well. Um, but if you'd asked me before the, the losses to Edwards, let's say he beat Edwards and he was still on that run and you put Hamzat against him, yeah. I'd, I'd say fairly easily he beats Hamzat. Yeah. Um, only because Hamzat came up against one top competitor, Gilbert Burns, still won like comfortably, but had his moments where it was a bit hairy and scary. Yeah. And no disrespect to Gilbert Burns, but not the same level as Usman. Now, though, after the losses, you know, I don't know. I mean, what what shape Usman's in? But I still think Usman should have enough to get it done. Yeah, I I, I do agree. I do agree with that. With um with Burns as well, I think that that was probably the best Burns that we saw. Mm. And when when Burns went up and fought uh, Kamaru, that was, um, I don't think that that was super competitive. Uh, mm. In in terms of, Kamaru was very convincing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, interesting. I yeah, I I do I have Kamaru for that as well. Mm. Look, I mean, if it's at welterweight for sure, yeah. it has to be. If it's at middleweight, I think it favors Hamzat. Yeah. Um, could it be a middleweight it, it, I mean if you look at Hamzat there was talk of him fighting in middleweight in any event yeah. um, whether it was Costa whether it was Drikus, um, it's kind of similar to Pereira's situation where I think it's so tough you know when he fought Holland um, uh, Hamzat did apparently he couldn't cut any more yeah you know I know he said that it was doctors told him like uh, well that just confirms it really yeah, he, you know, he was trying read. to make some excuse of like yeah. he was told he wasn't allowed to but that's like that's for your health dude yeah so and he came what seven and a half eight and a half pounds over so I think and and Usman as well now the thing is at 170 the only way he fights for a title again is maybe against Colby but then what do you have a fourth fight with Colby Mm. I don't think so. Plus, yeah. he's also talking about Trikas, you know, the whole just because you moved to another country, yeah. <laughs> you know, that whole thing. So that would actually, that would, I'd like to see that fight. Mm. That would be a, yeah, a very interesting matchup. Mm. Um, Who would you have for that? Trikas all day, bro. Yeah, all day. He's too big. He's too strong. Yeah. I think he KOs him if he doesn't just take him down and ground and pound. You know, and yeah. you? Uh, same, same. Mm. I, I think. Especially like after the two losses, um, yeah. If it were to happen today, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, if 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 Kamara got more confidence, it would be tougher. But I still have Drakus. Yeah. Yeah. I look. I, I mean, again, Kamara Usman, amazing fighter. Like, I've no disrespect at all. But I think Drakus would have probably beaten him, even if he was at his at, at his peak. peak. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's just it's just a different. You saw it with Israel Adesanya and um, Jan Blakowicz. Mm. Um, where it's there's just a size gap, and you know when they're both skillful, size makes a difference. Yeah, and strength, especially if you've got ha rely heavily on your clinching and your wrestling. Um, he maybe could could outstrike Drikus a little bit. I don't know. Maybe you'd have to see different styles. Yeah, but I think yeah, I think Drikus would get it done. But who do you have for um, Usman and and Hamzat? Oh no! Uzman. In Abu Dhabi, eh? In, in Abu, Abu Dhabi, Dhabi yeah. I, I have Usman. Um, Hamzat, I, I, I mean, if it's at welterweight, oh, that's that's. If it's at middleweight, I still Usman, yeah. Mm. But that being said, I, 
then Kamza does have the size advantage, I yeah. think. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's that's actually a tough one. Um I'm I'm gonna say Usman still. Usman. By decision. Yeah. I've, I yeah, I think decision. Um just yeah, you're right. Grinds him out for I don't know if it's gonna be five rounds or three rounds or what it's gonna be, but either way I think he's yeah, you know, similar to how he ground uh, a win out against Covington in this second fight. Um, the one where he broke his jaw. Yeah, Ew. yeah. Yeah. Was that the second or the third fight? I keep forgetting. No, no, I think there was the third. Sorry, there was the last one. No, he broke it. Yeah, he broke it in the second. Was it the second or the first that he broke it? I think I I can't remember. I'm getting so confused if they've had a two two or three fights. They've had three fights. No, they've had three. Yeah, I also think decision. Um, similar to what. Uh, what happened in the second fight between Usman and Colby? Yeah. Um, I know I said three fights earlier, but um, you're always, always getting so confused with these trilogies and quadrilogies no, no, no. that I are coming up. So, understood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I think we're both going Usman for that uh, for that fight. Yeah. Um, something else that also popped up that was quite interesting was um, uh, Rafael dos Anjos or RDA versus Luque. Yeah. That's... See that. I, I, I can't wait for that fight. I think Luke K just as a submission artist is like very technical and that with RDA is just like power and he's like um just the energy that he brings to a fight. That's good that's that's gonna be a very cool like technical matchup. Mm, hundred percent. Um it's so hard to call these. They're so evenly matched in yeah. in just they're, they're all actually all around really good. Um but like I can't bet against I'll never bet against RDA like in in these sort of you know unless it's top top tier yeah um, no disrespect to Luke but like I can never bet against him yeah yeah Luke he's, he's number ten I think at at the moment somewhere around I haven't checked exactly where he is but yeah. I'm but I mean I'm talking like top top he three is, four yeah. five you know um so yeah I just can't bet against him I don't know who to, but but then like you say Luke so it's yeah. It's so tricky. I, I I'd love to see what the odds are, like when people, you know, for the betting odds for these. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, with with RDA, he's just such a all of the the opponents that he, he seems to get. I I do think at least the UFC they have and the matchmakers they have the same um, opinion as you, where it's you know that that's the guy you have to beat if you want to make it into the top five. Mm. Like yeah, mm. uh, terrific fighter. Yeah, I think they I think they really appreciate everything that he's done for the UFC and always willing to fight. Um, Conor McGregor would think otherwise after their uh, uh, whole yeah, <laughs> spat with the 145, 155. But yeah. yeah, I mean, he's almost building that Donald Cerrone legacy in terms of number of fights and never really backing down from a fight yeah. and it's really being the, the guy. Issue. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, his legacy, in my opinion, um, sounding very disrespectful tonight, but it's better than Donald Cerrone's. <laughs> um, no disrespect to Donald Cerrone, yeah. you know. <laughs> Third time I say that, uh, but you know, um, you know, he won the title and Tony didn't. Um, so, but just that willingness to fight and just rack up fight after fight after fight, and it seems like he he's very little time between yeah. between fights. Yeah, no, you always see his name on the card, and it's like whoa, yeah, mm. yeah. No, he's it's really good to have him around. But that being said, Luke, like that man with the bulldog choke, mm. like it, yeah, that thing gets tight, and mm. the the the. The people that he's taken out thus far, like he does deserve to be in the top ten. If he's not, I, but I'm, I'm fairly certain he's yeah. up there on there. Yeah, um, they they both they're both definitely in the top fifteen. Um, so who you got winning on that one? I think I think Luke. I mean, uh, RDA, no disrespect, like great fighter, but I I think I I'm gonna say Luke. Uh, mm. second round submission. Okay, so RDA decision, I think. Okay. Um. Like I say, I, ca I can't bet against RDA in these sort of middle of the ranking type uh, fights. You know, no. it can go either way. Like, it can, yeah, no. you know, um, but I think he wins more times than he doesn't um, in these types of scenarios, and finds a way to get to get it done. So I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So another another interesting week of of potential matchups. Um, Rachmanov saying he wants to welcome Gastelum back to welterweight. Um, that's a as a fan, that's like amazing fight. You things yeah. you want to see, you know. Um, Rachmanov obviously seventeen and zero, um, been on an absolute absolute tear. Uh, Gastelum, we all know Gastelum can almost beat anybody on any given night. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting one to to watch that. Yeah, it's also it's it's great opportunity for Gastelum. I when he's calling for the Drikas fight, 
that didn't make any sense. But at the same time, there was a part of you that was like, okay, if that did happen, that wouldn't be the end of the world. Mm. Just because he does deserve like a, a spot there, you know, mm. at, at the top. Um, so yeah, it'll be really exciting. I also think Gaslam coming off the win, I, I think that this is like, it, it can go really well for him in particular. Mm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if he's, you know, having gone up to 185 and now coming back down to 170, obviously if he takes a lot of time to do it, then you can do it right and you yeah. won't lose too much power or be too drained. Um, I mean, this is if they fight. I mean, we, we're just dealing in hypotheticals here, but his power to that left hand is just... Ah, Gastelum, I like his chances in this fight. You always fancy Gastelum. That's a thing though. Like yeah. you always know Gastelum has a chance. Yeah. You know, he's got that that puncher's chance and... and I, I don't want to like say that's all he's got, but he has got that. And and even like with Drikus, even though you think again like Drikus would probably beat him, like he has power in his hands. Yeah, and he could knock out anybody at any time. Yeah. Castellum. Yeah. So it, it it does like come down to I mean fighters' chance. Yeah. Mm. No, I yeah. Always exciting fight as well. Mm, yeah. What are we saying for this one? Early predictions. I think that being said, still Rock Rockmanoff. Mm. <laughs> like probably, I don't, he's the smart bet in my opinion. Mm. Um, but yeah, Gaslam. I mean, there's this. It's it's pretty hard to call. I think that if if Gaslam wins, it'll be an exciting finish. Mm. Um, but Rockmanoff, otherwise, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think Rachmanov, um is going to try to take it to the ground, possibly. I think he's going to try to make it... Um, like slow. Slow, maybe. Yeah. I, I wanted to say ugly, but I don't... It's, uh, again, you know... Just, maybe we should just call this a disrespectful episode. No disrespect <laughs> again, you know, but like... Yeah. Um, maybe make it ugly. And I think if Gastelum can keep it standing, he'll win. But doesn't Gastelum, he, he trains with Henry, uh, Suhuda. He does, yeah. So but... He, I mean, okay. We don't know till we know, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. If he can keep, if it, look, if he can keep it standing, I think that's the way he wants to finish. He wants to, he wants to KO. Yeah. Um, so, but I don't know if he's gonna. I don't know. We never know. This is what makes it so exciting. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a tough one to call. I'm also gonna say Rachmanov. Um, I don't think submission. Probably decision, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Or or submission, but I think decision. Yeah, that, that would be a good strategy for him to just like. Like drag him down to deep to deep waters. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Mm. Maybe grind him out. Mm. Yeah. Then again, maybe he feels like he needs to make a statement, and I mean, he's gone and called him out, make a statement, and really win in a spectacular fashion. Yeah. But I, sure, oh, I don't know if it's smart to stand with Gastelum. Not for him. I don't yeah. know. But that would be the statement. That would be that would be interesting to see. Yeah. If he does that, then yeah, there might be discussions of. It's such an interesting. Set up at 170 up at the top, mm. you know, because again, if Usman goes to 185 or, you know, if Leon Edwards wins against Colby Covington, yeah. then maybe they do Rachmanov. Um, you know, who else are they going to are they gonna have fight against Leon? 170. What about Bilal? Bilal, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's weird with Bilal because people like, Boot him in the last. Yeah. You know, so that was also in Jersey. He was making like really strange well, not strange, but like he 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 was making it very known that he didn't like Jersey for some reason. I think there's some backstory there. Fair enough. Yeah. But I mean, is he a, is he big enough of a draw, you know, Rachmanov? Yeah, it does has a bit more hype behind him, you know. Yeah. Um look at how long it took Leon Edwards to get his title shot. Yeah. Bilal is kind of a, a very similar to to Leon Edwards, like the stories that they were that you can see like him winning and cleaning out this division, but mm. then like, yeah, he does not not a big enough name or a draw. Mm. It's gonna be interesting, dude. I still, I still. Side note, um, still think of like if Nate beat Diaz had beat Leon Edwards. Yeah, and it was like we we're ten seconds off. How like, <laughs> would the how would the landscape <laughs> yeah. have changed, dude, yeah. in the welterweight division? Like, Usman would still be champion. Like he wouldn't have he wouldn't have lost the first. I mean, wouldn't there would have been no first fight? Yeah. You know, and maybe by now Usman would have gone up to eighty five and tried to fight. Well, no, he wouldn't have got to eighty five because Izzy Izzy was a champion, so yeah. they'll never fight each other. But no, but Alex was so at the time. I oh, know, but it was always going to be. Yeah, I mean, and then Izzy got a straight rematch, so you know it would have been interesting because he again like cleaned out the division yeah. almost two or three times, and that maybe to his detriment. You know, he'd already beaten Leon Edwards, so what was he really proving trying to beat him again? But in retrospect. Leon yeah. won, so it was justified. Yeah. Oof, what a 
Yo, welterweight. That's like that's a, a division of killers. Those top that top five is crazy. Mm. Yeah, it's like Colby as well would have maybe been a dominant champion if there was no Usman. Yeah, maybe similar to Rob Robert Whitaker. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be interesting now as well um, with Adesanya. Like if. You know, obviously a lot of things have to happen and there's so many ways it can go. And the way we want it to go is Drikas beats Whitaker and then beats, well, the way I want it to go. Yeah. Drikas beats Whitaker and beats Adesanya. Then they probably have a rematch, hopefully beats him again. Um, you know, what What does Adesanya do then? Move because up? Maybe. Maybe. I think either way he probably moves up because I was going to say on the flip side, mm. if Whitaker wins and he beats him again, uh, beats uh, Adesanya beats Whitaker again. Yeah. Um. And then let's say, Drik, you know, then does he wait for Drikus or does he just go up? Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see what he does, or does he just retire? Because he's he runs the risk. Let's say he he you know things work out in the favor that he keeps winning. Yeah. He runs the risk, kind of like Usman of trying to over almost over clean out the division again a second third time. Um, and mm -hmm. then people adjust and he doesn't necessarily adjust. Yeah, and you can do so much more. I mean, like, I do think that it's a smart career choice to at least try, like, a run for two belts, mm. you know. But your, I mean, ideal world, like, that all happens with Trikas winning and, and then Izzy moves up and John moves back down and we're mm. going to see that fight mm. because, oh, that would be a, still a really interesting fight. I know that's probably never going to happen. But w when all that shit talking was happening between the two of them, that was just really exciting. It was exciting, but it was kind of like when people wanted um, Anderson Silva and GSP to fight or Anderson uh, Silva yeah. and John Jones. Okay, Anderson Silva, GSP, there's a real chance because of the size not being that big a difference. Yeah. I feel like Anderson Silva, uh, John Jones was never going to happen. Yeah, he, he would like... He would was, murk him, yeah. unfortunately. Um, yeah. Again, size. But I feel the same. I, I feel the same with Adesanya and, uh, John, and Jones. John Jones. Yeah. I think John Jones, even if he didn't have that extra weight that he gained now which actually might even be a disadvantage for him yeah. I for think speed. he would just I think he would murder Adesanya I just don't know I just see it in that way you know I don't know yeah we kind of saw it with um, Adesanya versus Blokovic you know the size difference was just way too much and then you put on you know John Jones has got an even longer reach and yeah. and the greatest of all time the most skillful yeah um, Yo, if you took Izzy down I think that that would just be a quick fight yeah, that would not be good for Izzy. Yeah. Eh? I mean, Izzy could maybe try to scramble, but I don't know. I mean, John Jones could. Yeah. John Jones could hammer fist you from freaking half guard. Yeah. John Jones could hammer fist you from around the corner, bro. That guy's yeah. reach is so long. But if Izzy could keep it standing, I think that that would just like, if if there was some custom rules where you can't take anyone down and it's just kickboxing, I still think John wins. But that would just be an interesting like chess mm. match. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it would. Yeah, I just think Izzy, his reach is just too is not long enough. Yeah. You know, John Jones has the longest reach. I don't know if he still does, but has always historically had the longest reach in the UFC. Yeah, and like I say, I mean, there's a, um, I've heard a story of a guy here in Cape Town that went to go train at Jackson Wink, and then he says like, like he sparred with John Jones. And then he still thought, nah, cool. I'm like, my range is good and whatever. And he just tags, kept on tagging him because his range is so long. Yeah. So, I mean, I. And he keeps you at that range. Like those kicks, those oblique kicks to the knee. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those little side side kicks to the knee. Yeah. I think, you know, again, fantasy booking, I, I would make that, that fight would make a lot of money. Yeah. But I, I think it'd be a cop out. I think John Jones would just. There's very few people I think could ever beat John Jones. Like if you ever had to take. Any fighter throughout history that could beat him, maybe Ngannou could have. I think Ngannou maybe could have had a good chance. Um, prime Brock Lesnar maybe could have taken him down and just ground out a win. Yeah, um, sat on him. Yeah, I mean, who, who do you think any fighter ever in history would be able to beat him? Uh, John Jones, Prime Crow Cop. No, I don't. I don't think so. Mm. No, Prime Fyodor Emelianenko maybe. I think no. he's too skillful, dude, John Jones. It'll be interesting, though. So maybe, Izzy, you want to fight John Jones? I mean, as fans would love to see it. He's not going to see this, but, you know, anyway, <laughs> it would be good It would be good to um, to have that fight. But, yeah, I think it's probably done by now. I don't think they're going to, I yeah. mean, especially if he's gone up to heavyweight. I can dream. Yeah. So you picking John Jones in that John one? Jones, John Jones. Day. Yeah. Well, I think now, now we're on the topic of fantasy bookings. Maybe we should have a little fantasy booking of old uh, 
three of the goats, and let's maybe chuck in what some people think is a goat, Habib. I don't think he's in that list, but if you had to take Habib versus GSP, yeah, at GSP. 170. GSP. GSP, okay. <laughs> yeah. GSP versus Anderson Silva. GSP. 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 Well, prime, at, at, prime versus prime. At, at, the, at which weight? 185. He'll uh, G, um, Anderson yeah, yeah. Silva would never make 170, I think. Yeah, catch weight somewhere in the middle. I yeah, still GSP, yeah. You reckon? Well, actually, no, wait, okay. But Anderson Silva, he does have like the biggest tear of all time. Um, I'm still gonna say, I'm gonna say GSP. I think Anderson Silva, dude. I think Anderson, I think GSP does always like adjustments. And... I can see why you say GSP, like, I'm not, I'm not just dis discounting it, but. Yeah. I just think Anderson Silva, there was no way anybody could. I mean, just the way he fought Forrest Griffin and took him to the Matrix, the way he finished <laughs> Chael Sonnen when he was being, being battered for four and a half rounds. Yeah. He beat killers like TRT Vitor, like, mm. and TRT Vitor, <laughs> like, yeah, he was almost beat up. John Jones, dude. <laughs> yeah. Almost beat John Jones. Yeah. That was a scary prospect. So, yeah. okay. I'd, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say Silva. But I can see why you say GSP. And then Silver Jones? Um, oh, Jones. Jones, yeah. Jones. I also think John Jones. Um, Prime Jones. Anyone. Any Jones. Even Jones right now. Yeah. Party Jones. No Party Jones. <laughs> I think yeah. Party Jones is better than No Party Jones. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> he actually said so himself. He's like, when he doesn't party for that week before, he's actually fights worse. I think he fought uh, St. Prue, OSP. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. So the fantasy bookings. Okay. So we're saying then... A little spin off to that. Um, what about the the? So are there, is that your goat list then? Oh no, goat list. I think. Well, okay, John Jones first, and then Demetrius Johnson second, third. Oof, that that always like hops around between GSP and I. I, I do put Izzy up there. Mm, Izzy really? Up there. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Alex Volkanovski. Um, Actually, I'm gonna. I'm at the moment. Alex Volkanovski's there. Mm. Yeah. And you? What are your top three? To, okay, so top mm, top three: John Jones, Anderson Silva, GSP. Okay. I don't, um, John Jones first. I'm talking primes now. Yeah, so okay. like prime, yeah. prime version of each of them. And then I think prime um, Amanda Nunes, mm. possibly. Number five's hard if you had to pick a fifth one. Mm. I know you asked for three, but I'm giving five. No, no, it's um, good. That's good. No, keep them coming. Top ten. No, 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 no. I can't <laughs> pick you. I can't pick a top ten. I actually I think if you just take prime, yeah. I actually think prime Connor's better than prime Volkanovsky. In my opinion. Okay, no, no, that's fair. I mean, like at yeah, are you talking like when he was like at moving their peak. up? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that was like a, yeah, okay. But I, I don't I, have him in the top five though. Uh top five prime. Ooh, Fedor Milenenko. Okay. I yeah, can, I, can I think. Yeah, no, no specific order for two to five. Yeah. Okay. And careers as a whole, I still think John Jones, GSP, Anderson Silva. Even though he should have stopped. Mm. Volkanovski. DC. No. Mm. Okay, I guess he did lose to John Jones. Don't know who five would be. Five. Ho, ho, ho. Anyway, I'll pick a Khabib. top four. No, no, <laughs> no. Don't get me wrong. Listen, Habib in terms of actual dominance, like yeah. super dominant. But like if you look at the yeah. other people on this list, yeah. I mean, they fought the killers of the killers yeah. for like eight fights in a row, 10 fights in a row where Habib only really fought the top guys like the last four. three, four fights. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So who's your top? Like, let's make a top four, like ever, just okay. career as a whole. Okay, uh, career. I'm, I'm going to say so. Top John Jones. Um, second, I'm gonna say DC. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I'm a, I'm a big fan of DC's career. Mm. Um, I mean, he did lose to John Jones. That's why he's he, not first. Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, third. If if. I'm still a fan of Conor McGregor, and I will we'll get to the the documentary. But like, I still think what he's done in the sport, uh, he's top three for me. Mm. Um, even though, like, in terms of his legacy and actually winning fights, not not since you know, um, uh, since he he fell off. Alvarez, yeah, yeah. Um, but from there, like, yeah, 
um, he's done so much in the sport. Good career. I mean, um, and then four, I would say, I'm mean, GSP. Mm -hmm. GSP. Um, five, Anderson Silva, just because you know, he, mm -hmm. he's a goat. He's definitely mm -hmm. a goat. I've got Demetrius Johnson number five there. Mm. That's my number five. Mm. So yeah, so um, did you see the UFC Fight Night um, card that's coming up soon? Yeah, yeah, it, it does look like an exciting card. I think that there's a few matchups that um, are sleeper matchups where like you wouldn't think that there's like a lot going on there, but mm. like it's yeah, it does look like a pretty stacked card. And mm. if you know the fighters, then it's. Yeah, uh, like a really cool, exciting card. Yeah, there's a lot of closely matched uh, or close matchups um, yeah. between between a lot of the fighters. So the first fight is um, Jamie Malaki versus Guram. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm going to butcher his surname, so I'm not going to say it, but we'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> okay. uh, what are you thinking for that one? I think Guram. Um, mm. He's coming off that decision loss, that mm. split decision loss. Yeah. Um, but Jamie, I, I mean, they're both dogs. Like they are both dogs, but I, I do have Guram in this. I think that that. That really could that loss. He before that he was he had a nine fight win streak. Nine fight win streak, yeah. Mm. And he, yeah, it, it it really could have gone either way. I think that he'll come back from that. Yeah, um, the right way. Yeah, go hundred percent, Gurum. Mm, okay. Yeah. How, how do you think? It's tough to call, dude. However he likes, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever presents itself. You know, yeah. I think he's very well rounded. I think he's had he's had a good career so far, and um, yeah, his UFC career. So any sort of really getting started. So I think he, I think however he chooses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next fight is um, Ketlin Silva versus Kareen Souza. Yeah. Um, what are we thinking there? Oof. I think Souza. And you? Yeah, Souza. Yeah. Six fight win streak versus I think a five fight win streak. Yeah. Um, she's just more vicious in my opinion. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, I I do agree. I said I I do like that. Well, the the format of someone's like leaving their streak in that cage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's O's got to go. Well, yeah. for that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think she's, she's had a, uh, Sousa's had a lot more decisive victories. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I'm also saying finish. I yeah. don't know how yet, but finish. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree. Mm. Um, yeah. It lo yeah. Interesting fights. Very but closely matched. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say. So very closely matched. It could go either way, but I think, yeah. Yeah. I'm going with with Souza. Mm. So yeah, Kareen Silva, um, Ketlin Souza. What are we saying for this one? Um, I'm going to say Silva. Mm. I think that they're both on the on a on a win streak. Yeah, six so. for uh, Silva and five for Souza. Yeah, so like really impressive. I like that someone's going to leave that cage and like not not have won. Someone's always got to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I still think Silva. Um, just because of the fights that she's been in, she seems like. Quite dominant. Mm, she's got more decisive victories than uh, than Souza, and I think Souza's got more decisions. So it's not always a bad thing, but I think you know she just gives me more of a ruthless vibe. Silver yeah. does so, and she's a silver. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it bodes well. Yeah, <laughs> probably by finish. I think. Yeah, you think? I think. Okay, if yeah. it does go Souza, I think maybe submission. I think that that's the that's the story. It's gonna like mm. uh, like um, unfold there. Yeah. That's an interesting matchup. It could really go either way. Yeah. So the next fight is Tim Elliott and Victor Altamirano. Mm. What are we saying there? I think Tim Elliott. I just just looking at this fight on paper, I think um, anyone would say Tim Elliott. I think that this is probably the one matchup that, w when looking at the, the, these are the two fighters that I wouldn't say are that closely matched. Mm. Um, and you, what are your thoughts? Um. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go with Altamirano okay. in this one. I think because so his losses are to Jared Brooks, who's now the one champion. Okay. Um, and then he's got a split decision loss. I forget against who it was, mm. Carlos Hernandez or something like uh, someone. I think it was. So I mean, tough losses, dude. Like like in terms of. Being close, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, Jared Brooks wasn't close. He got rear naked choke, but Jared Brooks is. I mean, yeah, well, you know, okay. yeah, he yeah, beat BK, and BK is an absolute killer. So, yeah. I'm gonna ult Altamirano, I think. Okay. So, how how do you how do you think he does it? It is tricky because Tamela is good, so maybe by decision. Um, but you know, in these fights, anything can happen. You know, there could be a crazy scramble, and then someone gets clipped. Yeah, they could. Something could be left open, and you have a submission, mm. um, or it could just be one of those where they just, just controls the whole fight. So, yeah. 
decision. Yeah, I I hope that you make a good point. Um, I, I'm still going to stay with Tim Elliott, but it's, what you just remind me of is how exciting these fights are. We like mm. it's the start of people's careers, so like they've got lots to show. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. That being said, still Tim Elliott. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see what. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to look back and see what what how the predictions yeah, how the predictions okay. go. Okay, so the next fight is Jim Miller versus uh, Jared Gordon. Um, mm. Jared Gordon, probably most famous for getting screwed against, in my opinion, against Paddy Pimlet. Yeah. Do you think that was intentional? Like, uh, do you think there's some conspiracy out there to, like, favor the, the bigger names? I think the... Hmm, how do you word this? I think people know it's a business. Yeah. Whether you look at an athlete, and I'm not saying that this is, but I think if if you were to to buy into the conspiracy, um, even the athletic commissions make money, yeah. right? So you see it with weird judging decisions, and I can see why people would, or let me rather say, I can see why people would say there there could be a conspiracy, yeah. um, because in my opinion, I don't think Paddy Pimlet's ever going to fight for a title. I don't think he's good enough. Yeah. Um, but he's got a big following and makes a lot of money. Yeah. So I can see it. Also, if you look at why, um, you know, Gordon wouldn't have got an immediate rematch because it was so close, maybe mm. they should have maybe done that. But yeah, I can see why people would say there is one. Yeah. I think there was also just like off of the, the Chorn O'Malley fight with, um, with Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Look, I mean, there's been some questionable judges' yeah, scorecards. Yeah. So, but why do you say Paddy? Uh, isn't I I I completely agree. But what, why would you say that Paddy would never fight for a title? Multiple reasons. The one is he's not good enough, in my opinion, as it is. Okay, mm. and I'd I'd be happy to be proven wrong because he's an entertaining dude. Yeah. But the big thing, and I think Rogan said this, was like in his camps, it's not a camp where he gets better. Yeah. His camps are what one massive weight cut. Yeah. So he balloons up to so, such a heavy weight. And then when he goes to his camp, so between fights, he's not he's not like training at a lower weight and be like, okay, I can train, I can get better, I can take my time. It's literally balls to the wall, cut the weight, yeah, huge amount of weight, yeah. So he's almost staying at the same level. And then not, you're not like, yeah, okay, I can see that. But also just just I mean, he's not he's he's not. I mean, I think Taporia would smoke him in Taporia because they've had a back and forth, and Taporia's uh, a forty five er. Yeah, I think Taporia would. That guy's like savage. I think he would smoke him. I think Paddy Pimlet would do really well to stay away from him. <laughs> uh, I think that would find it. I mean, you know, the, yeah. the, he would find out a lot there. Um, it's just one of those guys, dude. I don't think he's ever going to fight for a title, unfortunately. My opinion again, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. You reckon he will? Or I no, I don't think. I I think for the same for the same reason. Um, but yeah, I I well, I I didn't know about the 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 weight cut and like that. That does make a lot of sense. Um, Apparently, it is like that. I'm not. It might not be, but that's the story that comes out of his. Yeah. yeah. But I. I mean, I am inclined to like. I. I don't think you can discount any anyone like Charles. You know, Charles Oliveira. But I don't. So I just, just like I don't. I don't see that. Yeah, I don't mm. think you can foresee that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Paddy. Yeah, he's entertaining. Mm. That's, yeah. But back to the back to the fight card. Um, we sidetracked a little bit. Um, Jim Miller, Gordon. Who do you think's winning that one? Um, I think Gordon. Mm. I think Jim Miller. If if oh, if he gets hold of him and he's able to submit him, um, it'll it'll be good. I think it'll be hard to get there. Mm. Um, and yeah, I I think that that Jim. Sorry, that um, Gordon, Jared. Gordon, yeah, that Jared mm. keeps him at bay. You know, um, and like picks him apart. Mm. You? Oh, yes, I think so too. Mm. I think Jim Miller, you can never discredit. Um, you know, he can beat anybody, or, uh, not anybody, but he can he can win a lot of fights. But yeah, yeah Gordon. Mm. So the next fight is Alex Caseros versus Daniel Pineda. Um, Alex Caseros or Bruce Leroy from The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, um, he's actually been on a good run. Um, you know, his record's not that good, but he's been on a really good run. Yeah. Um, I'm picking Alex Caseros. Just because of how good his run has been, and his potential, maybe he's only tapping into that potential now of the potential he had back in the day. And I think Daniel Pineda is on a bit of a dodgy run. Um, there was originally a, and he's thirty-seven years old. Yeah. Um, Caceres was originally, I can't remember who he was scheduled to fight, but he's like twelve and four. 
the mm. guy was supposed to fight. Mm. So I think Caceres, yeah, it's got too much, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think it's that hard a fight for him. I think that it's not necessarily propping him up, um, but yeah, it, it's not going to be a walk in the park. I do see him winning, though. Mm. Um, in terms of the opponent that he's been given, I think that that's a pretty good matchup for him. Yeah. And from what we've seen from Tuff, you know, I think that, yeah, he, he'll get it done. Mm. And his run recently, you know, had a bad stretch off the Tuff and then he came back mm. now. Um, so, yeah. That's that's what I'm picking. Okay, so the last fight is the main event. Um, it's Kai Kara France versus Albazi. Yeah. Oh, tough <laughs> fight to call, dude. <laughs> that is. Um, oh, how do you feel about it? Again, Kara France, you know, like his record is not great, right? Okay, and yeah. I know you can't look at people's records, but it's a good indication. Like, yeah. okay. you know, yeah. Nate Diaz, horrible record. Um, Jorge Masvidal, horrible record, but you'll never discount him in a fight. And Kai Kara France, particularly after what he did to Cody, yeah. is one of those people. Mm. Um, Albazi obviously got a better run. I think he's like won his last four. Um, lost one fight, I believe, something like that. Um, should win on paper. Yeah. But Kai... He's fought some good guys and these losses have come to some good guys. Um, so it's a toss up, dude. It's a toss up. Let me yeah. hear what you say. I, I think, well, okay, I completely agree. I think that Kai's last loss, that was against Moreno. Mm. Um, and before that, it was a win against, was it Corey? Yeah, yes. I think yes. And then I think that was off. Was that was there a fight between that and, um, um, and I just said it, Garbrandt? Garbrand, uh, I think, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And then before my that, memories are way hazy on that. I, I see Kai winning. I see Kai winning just because he is a dog. Mm. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, I think that his record is. It's one of those cases where he has fought the best of the best. And like, I know that he's coming off of a loss. But yeah, I, I don't know. Those are those Australia guys. Like, mm. they, you can't discount them. Mm. Like, there's there's something in the water there. Like, yeah, true. Yeah, they 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 don't break or like mm. I I don't think that winning or coming off of a loss like does that much to them honestly. Yeah, hundred percent correct. I think like they say in other sports, the form book goes out the window. Um, but just to be different and for us not to agree on all of the results, I'm gonna say Albazi. Okay. Right. Okay. I wanted okay. to say Cara France. Okay. But just for us to be different, no, that's someone's got to be that's right that's here, that's and, and yeah. hopefully they're not gonna draw. So <laughs> we're yeah. putting money on this. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you saw some and this is not MMA related but kind of MMA related Team Khabib versus B Team Jiu Jitsu oh uh, yeah yeah um, in Kazakhstan strange enough yeah. no Habib mm -hmm. but the rest of his team uh, so kind of like the whole there was a there was a the a whole thing about the Dagestani guys saying you know Jiu Jitsu doesn't work and like I think Islam also said it before his fight with Volkanovski yeah um B team jiu jitsu, obviously, everybody in the jiu jitsu world knows them. Um, can be interesting, eh? It's going be very yeah. interesting. What are you thinking? I, yeah, it, it'll just be really, in, yeah, absolutely interesting to see how it plays out. And like, I don't think it's going to be the, the, the decider of what is like the, the better art form, but um, I don't think it's going to be a decider of like the better martial art. But I, yeah, it'll just be really interesting. I, I don't know. Like mm -hmm. just as as a thought experiment to see like how how these two like you know um, monolithic uh, teams can can go against each other. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, I think I look. It depends who from B team. I know it's going to be uh, so far. I think they're thinking Nicky Rod. They're thinking Craig Jones, and they're thinking Nicky Ryan. Mm. Um, there might be a couple of others. I think it's a team. I think it's a quintet. Mm. Or it might be individual. Either way, quintet or individual matches. Yeah. I think the biggest deciding factor is going to be the rule set. I don't think they're going to go for points. I think it's going to be submission only. Yeah. So kind of like those EBI type rules, we got submission only. Um, if it's no time limit, dude, sure, that's going <laughs> to that be, be amazing. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> um, you know, Craig Jones, the world's best number two. Um, <laughs> if he's fully focused and like gives everything to it i think he's going to do some serious damage i don't yeah, know if he'll absolutely. be main event yeah. um it's a grappling match which yeah i mean if it's going to be no points probably um i think 
I think the B team should have a good chance. It'll be interesting to see who Nicky Rod goes up against. Yeah. You know? I'm not too actually sure who Khabib or who the team would be without Khabib. No like, idea. Yeah. Will it be Islam? Will it be... Like Bilal, I think he's also part of their training. He's part of it. But will he want to risk? Maybe he gets injured and, you yeah. know, if you get heel hooked, you pop your knee and then you can't fight for a title if he is going to be, be the next in line. Yeah. I suppose he also doesn't... He's not really like that much of a... Like Sambo. Or, mm. or is it is it mainly the Sambo guys versus... I think... Well, yeah. I don't I don't think it really matters about... I mean, they're, they're, they're all... I think most of them practice Sambo and then like a bit of wrestling and everything. But it's, it's a grappling match. Mm. I mean, it's so... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who they pick. Maybe, you know, if they pick some young up-and-coming hungry guys that are maybe unknown, then it could be a very easy day for B team. Yeah. You know, um it's going to be so interesting if it's if it's submission only. Yeah. Your in imagine a world though if it was Khabib um and maybe he was like in a lower weight class but Craig Jones versus Khabib yeah. just like oof. Well, apparently Habib's got, there was talk of Habib and GSP doing a grappling match. No way. Yeah, there was, there was talk. I don't know how advanced the talks were. Mm. Um, you know, Habib did say his father's dream was for him to have a match with, uh, a fight with, with GSP. GSP. And GSP being retired, Habib being retired, they thought about a grappling match. Yeah. And that would have been interesting because Habib is massive yeah. like he's not it's not like a 155 against the 170 like gsp i don't know what he weighs my friend actually took a picture with gsp like a couple of weeks ago yeah. um and my friend's not the biggest guy but he was he looked a lot bigger than gsp in the picture mm. so i don't know what gsp weighs but um if they could decide on a weight maybe 170 mm. it would be very interesting if, if could be get down there or he should be able to. I think okay. he should be able to. I don't think he weighs that much. You know, I think 55 might still be a stretch because he's not training. Yeah. But if they had to do a 170 match, I mean, people would pay big money to see that. Yeah. It'd be really uh, Who would you have in that? Just grappling. <sighs> it depends on the rule set, you know. If it's a... Uh... You see, the thing is, I don't know if they would do like... I think they would do a time limit probably. No yeah. points. Yeah. Submission only. And then when you get to the time limit, it's a draw. Probably just out of respect for both of them, probably. Um, so I, I would go draw mm. if they did it that way. If you had to do the rules where you've got overtime, yeah. Uh, oh, oh it's, that's it's so tricky, one. dude. Because it because it's just crap. If you ask me, MMA, it's GSP, of course. We I think we said that earlier, but grappling, you got to kind of. I don't think GSP. I don't think Khabib can submit GSP. Mm. I don't think. Mm. But I think he can dominate him in scramble takedowns and everything mm. so if i had to pick i can't bet against gsp though man <laughs> i'm going completely against what i just said but gsp okay okay you um gsp <laughs> yeah yeah i mean yeah could be oof. actually no it does depend on the rules i think that if it's no i i think that if it's just grappling, I think that actually favors GSP a little bit. I mm. think that um a lot of Khabib's style it's like he, he needs to kind of like um disorientate you with the hands and then he can like get you mm. um but yeah, if it's grappling all the way through i think that gsp is technical enough to to mm. like grind out a win yeah mm. okay so yeah i see old uh shut up putin Mahamedov, the bullet yeah making yeah. his uh making his ufc debut apparently in august against a top contender they say yeah who do you think it would be this is it would be at 185 185 yo i mean canania is the only one that's kind of because, okay, let's think about this. Mm. Drikas, Whitaker. Mm. That's July. Yes. They're fight, the winner fights Izzy, the loser fights someone else. Yeah. You got... Um, Strickland? Maybe Strickland. Mm. Yeah, maybe Strickland. But because you've got... Okay, Strickland or Cannonier, because you've got um, uh, Paolo Costa mm. also fighting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think Strickland or Cannonier probably... Yo, if it's Strickland, I have like my money would be on the bullet. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't think that that would actually be fair. Yeah, yeah. maybe mm. a little bit sad. Honestly. Yeah, and it's not going to be Bo Nickel because Bo Nickel's fighting on the same card as Drikus. Mm. Um, which you know, depending on what the UFC thinks, they might they might want to. Okay, I'm gonna cut that out. Though. No, I don't want to. I don't want to put that out in the ether. That's that's politics. <laughs> so yeah, Bo Nickel's fighting on the same. It's not gonna be Bo Nickel because he's fighting on the same card as Drikus. Yeah. So I think yeah, Cannonier Strickland. Um, 
yeah, it depends how they want to go with it. You know, I, I I'd like to see him. I'd like to see uh, Mahomedov first yeah. before making any predictions of how any of those fights would go. Because look, I think it's still against Strickland. I think Strickland's a bit overrated. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and 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 it depends on the style of the person he fights, but yeah, Mohamedov. I mean, impressive run and everything, but um, I think I saw now he just got heel hooked in a in a grappling competition. Okay. Yeah, and like lost his. I, I'd need to double check that, but I'm almost sure I saw something pop up on Reddit today about him. I didn't look at it further, but I, yeah. apparently he just he just got heel hooked in a in a competition and completely lost it. <laughs> oh, crazy! Yeah. yeah, he does seem like the kind of person. I mean the. What's his record? It's something like like fourteen and zero. Something like yeah, fourteen and 0, 14 and one, something like that. I stand mm-hmm. corrected, but it's twelve or fourteen. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And like each, like he does seem like a very scary dude. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to like piss him off. Mm-hmm. It's kind of uh, yeah to to get him in a heel hook where he's still like not at all compromised after you <laughs> unwind that hook. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't want to be around there for that. It's gonna be interesting though because he's again, if you look at the size of like. Rikus, Robert, those guys. We see how interesting. See how he matches up size wise with them. Yeah. You know, just on the look of it, he looks a bit smaller than them. And I know size is not everything, but it does matter when you both have skill. Yeah. Um, I did watch his last decision win a little. Uh, I think I wasn't that convinced. You know, to be honest with you, um, that's why I say I want to see him in the UFC first. Yeah, you know, um, you names, never know. Yeah, like I, I don't know this organization that he comes from or any of the names. So I, he, it has been very dominant. But yeah, I, I, it's just very interesting because like it's it looks like it's all output. Like mm. he he just outputs like he's super confident in his cardio. Yes. Um, and it would just be interesting because, I mean, who's I don't know anyone in that organization, but the people in the USC also have great cardio. Mm. Um, I just want to see him versus Hamzat. Yeah. I feel like that's like an immovable force versus like uh, an unstoppable object. Yeah. 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 That would be crazy. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd love to see that fight. And then the trash talk, dude. Yeah, it would be, oh, it would be something else. But Hamzat for me in that one, just yeah. so by the way, I, I think mean, I like that. It, it would probably be trash talk that I can't understand. Yeah, it but you, be, but you'll know kind of what yeah. they're saying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like when Vito Balfour and um, um, Anderson Silva were trash talking each other. Yeah. It was in Portuguese. Yeah. You didn't understand a thing. <laughs> it's like oh my god. But you're like oh dude, <laughs> did you see his facial expression? So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see. But let's let's wait and see for his first fight, and yeah. and then then you know we'll learn a lot from there. Yeah. It won't be everything, but we all learn a lot from there. Yeah. It's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah, just something boxing related. Um, I don't know if you saw Haney got fined four hundred thousand. I did uh, dollars for his push on Lomachenko. I did. I and he was also blaming Lomachenko. Like you see, he was like, yeah, I I don't understand how it would be. Should it would be the commission that that imposed the fine? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. It should be. I mean, I don't look, he's obviously complaining about four hundred thousand dollar fine. Um it's a staggering amount of money yeah. to be fined. But I think if you look at how much money is on the line in that fight, mm. um, it's peanuts. It's a drop in the ocean. Yeah. You know. Um and I think it's gonna hopefully lay down a marker because people have been injured. Um and people have Great had show. No, people have been injured from all sorts of antics. I mean, even locally, um, one of the guests on on the podcast, um, Jessmine Amney, she got a she got shoved at a weigh-in and there was a scale behind her oh, okay. and like whacked her foot and like, you know, still fought, still won the fight, but could have had it could have been much worse. I mean, if you've got a massive gash in your foot, yeah, let's say. Um wasn't there a fighter that got shoved in the chest and got a heart attack? Oof, I I'm I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was a fighter or a boxer that got, you know. And then if you take it a step further, you look at these crazy Russian weigh-ins where these dudes are fighting at the weigh-ins. Yeah. You know, and the one guy's getting KO'd and the other guy's doing jumping kicks into the yeah. freaking dude's chest. Yeah, you don't want that. You yeah. don't want that. Yeah. You know, it looks bad for the sport and it can compromise the, the bajillions of dollars yeah, that these you. these fights make. So you think, so you think it's a good, well, like in terms of, like it, it's a good preemptive measure, you know, accept the president. Yeah, I think they should just make sure that every single time it happens, it should be consistent. Yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent, think so. Um, yeah. So, guys, um, I think we're gonna call it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, please smash the like button. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Please have a look in the description. Um, we've just set up the Spotify account for um, for the podcast and the show. So, if you prefer to watch uh, or listen on Spotify. 
please go ahead. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, um, the PayPal link and the Patreon link are down below. What that money will go to is just improving the show. Um, for those of you that like the podcast, bringing you um, more interesting guests um, and, and you know, maybe will allow us to travel to go see some guests. Um, please let us know what you think of this episode. Please have a look for our socials down below and um, let us know what you want to see in the episodes going forward. Thanks again for watching, guys. Cheers.